So, Justin, welcome to Channel One. It's very nice to have you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Okay. Are you on uh, studio again, ready to start a new music project? Tell us some things. Uh-huh. Well, um, the 11th album. I think in the last few years, we, we tried to get back into making records regularly and not being, you know, not too many side projects and mm-hmm. things like that. Um, and it's a, I think this version of New Model Army that we're together now, um, three, four years, this is the best version of New Model Army that I've been in since maybe 1985. She's a, a great band. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you tell me some uh, things, some of your memories, maybe from a classic album, Thunder and Consolation, about this period? Oh, that's 20 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. Do I remember it? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was written very fast. Mm-hmm. in two 10-day sessions at a place called the Sawmill, which is a very special studio in Cornwall, which is my favorite part of England, in the, the place that sticks out at the bottom by the sea. And it was a studio that you could only reach at high tide. Um, and mm-hmm. we, were, we were stuck down there for, I think, two, just two 10-day sessions, and we wrote the whole album, yeah. mostly just myself and Robert. And... Um, but then we came to recording it, and recording was painful and took a long time and went wrong many times, and uh, it was difficult. Yeah. You know, just. The writing was yeah. great and easy, and then the recording was difficult. That is often the case with New Model Army. I find that I really like, I love writing, I love touring, and I find making records quite difficult. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Justin, uh, seems to me in all those years that uh, New Model Army has uh, all the essence, all the ethos of the um, original uh, punk rock music. Do you think so? I think it has the spirit of it. Yeah. Um, in the sense that I remember p- punk was a kind of cultural revolution. Mm-hmm. And the, the point of punk was that it was more important, the spirit with which you played or created anything, whether it was poetry or music or anything, yeah. was more important than the technical details. Exactly. Um, because music became very technical in the 70s. Mm-hmm. And it was a kind of revolution to sweep all that away and get back to the spirit. I think we've kept that, really. Mm-hmm. Although the trouble with the, the word punk is that it's come to mean playing four chords really badly. And that, kind of, to me, is pretty boring. Yeah. Are you still uh, having uh, troubles with the uh, USA? <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, with a live market uh, there. We have our problems with the U.S. authorities getting into the country sometimes. Mm, but when we're there, uh, that, you know, there's a small American audience that absolutely is dedicated to New Model Army. It's a very, we're a strange band in the sense that we're not a kind of really big band anywhere. Um, we're, a, we're a kind of cult band everywhere. Yeah. Anyway, I think that uh, New Model Army is one of the best uh, bands ever. From my point of view, you know, I'm already 20 years uh, here as a radio producer, so I can say some things. I'm most pleased. Thank you. What about the British British, uh, music scene at the time, nowadays? Give us a picture. It's difficult to say. uh, Britain, you know, there's so many, many, many bands and musicians in in Britain, and everybody's doing different, interesting things. Mm -hmm. I think there's amazingly wonderful music being made in all over Britain but also actually all over the world. Um, But what reaches the public through mainstream radio and mainstream marketing is not usually the best. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell me some things, uh, Justin, about uh, Tommy T, Tommy T's loss? Tommy T joined New Model Army in 1982 as a driver, because everybody hated my driving. (laughs) And... um, he quickly became tour manager, and he was our tour manager through to the end of the 80s. And then he left because he wanted to manage somebody. He managed a metal band called The Almighty. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he came back to New Model Army in 1996. And him and me, we sort of sat down and discussed how the internet was going to change everything. And we thought that it was best to, to have control over everything we did. So we own our own record company. We own our own publishing. We own everything. And he did everything. Uh, he did the record company, he did the tour managing, he did the publishing. Uh, he looked after every aspect of New Model Army to the point where we became very, very lucky, really. We just got on with making music. Yeah. And he did the rest. Um, 
and he was a he was kind of like the, the, the another member of the band in many yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. And then uh, at Christmas he died very suddenly, very kind of uh, unexpected. Yeah. So it's kind of strange time for us because, you know, because he did everything. She was a new model army guy after all. Huh? Absolutely. Mm. I mean, most of our crew, to be honest, have been with us many, many years, and they're kind of, um, you know, it's like a big family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know. Um, and, and Tommy was the kind of steerer of the family. He's like the helmsman on a ship. He yeah. steered the family. Okay. Justin, what about the Greek uh, fans? You have a very devoted audience here, as you know, for many years now. Can we expect an Athens gig, maybe? Yeah, I hope so. Um, it's a couple of years since we came. Last time we came, we played one show in um, Athens, which yeah. was good, and we played a great show in uh, Thessaloniki, yeah. um, which was our first time there. And uh, they were both really good shows, so I hope, hopefully we'll come back soon. Okay, Justin, thank you very much for your time for this interview. Pleasure. We'll, we'll in touch, okay? Okay.